What if I told you there were seven key elements of a better life that would result in seven major long-term benefits? Sometimes you look at others quickly concluding that they have it all together, or their life is not well-rounded, or they are just a mess. By having a balance of seven key things in your life, you could be the one who really does have it all together. In order to create and maintain a balance in your life, you must have internal balance in your mind, health, and heart, and you must have external balance in your work or school, social relationships, family, and friends. In this talk, I will give you information that could help you create an external balance in your life. The benefits of a balanced life include improving your mood, reducing stress, improving health and well-being, becoming more efficient and productive, enjoying yourself, having more time for yourself, and having a better social life. Remember, your brain does not stop developing until your mid-20s or early 30s, so a small adjustment or change in your habits now to create a balanced life would be easier sooner rather than later. The younger you are when you make these adjustments, the more you can benefit from a balanced life. Last year, I talked about competitive dance and how it is a strenuous sport behind the scenes, but also a beautiful art that we as dancers are supposed to make look graceful and easy on stage. This year, I challenged myself to pick a topic that I knew nothing about, so that I could use the information that I was gathering to solve problems in my own life. I am always looking far into the future to figure out how to best schedule my life now in order to positively impact everything from tomorrow to my retirement. I consider myself an overachiever and an overscheduled child. I thrive on making myself busy. You might ask yourself why people in your life make themselves so busy, and here's a few reasons why. It has been proven that busyness boosts productivity, and I'm sure you have seen it in your daily quarantine life. Throughout the quarantine that this global pandemic has caused, I have been able to find a little bit more downtime, which has benefited my health. Many of us might have found that our busyness died down when all of our activities came to a halt. If you have benefited from this quarantine in any way, consider talking with your family about adjusting your activities for when this is all over in order to keep a healthy balance with some necessary downtime. Most kids have to complete their homework in a certain time frame before they head to their next activity, but without any extra commitments, they become less motivated to do their work. Some people are always looking into the future and they want to know that later on in their life, they won't look back and regret the time that they wasted by not doing enough. What does all of this busyness result in? Let's address the main source of our down emotions, stress. And the main source of our stress is pressure. Where does pressure come from? Personally, the majority of the pressure that I feel, I put on myself. Many kids feel pressure from their parents, guardians, teachers, or coaches. Whether you are self-motivated or need that extra little push from another figure in your life, the amount of pressure that some kids feel now can be unbearable. A lot of high schoolers feel pressure coming from the simple thought of college or anything else in the future. Sometimes I feel that everything I'm doing now will determine the next 50 years of my life, and let me tell you, it's a really scary feeling. What you do now could potentially affect the rest of your life, and if that doesn't stress you out of your mind, the only thing that I can tell you is I'm insanely jealous of your talent. After this year, I will start planning for college. In college, I will look for internships, and after college comes the start of my career. After that, life just continues to speed up. Most high schoolers can agree that just the thought of college creates stress. In order to have an application unique enough to get you into the college of your choice, there's a good chance that you'll have to work hard in class, succeed in class, participate in extracurriculars, be involved in your school, and have something that no one else can offer. Sometimes pitching yourself as this extravagant candidate isn't even good enough for the admissions office. Expectations for children and teenagers have been set so high that it is negatively affecting our society. Think just a few years back to the 1980s. My dad always tells me stories about how he would be playing outside and his mom would have to call him and his siblings in for dinner. He said that they would come home from school after practice, help out with chores around the house, hang out with their neighbors, and play outside until their mother called them in for a dinner where the whole family would sit at the table at once. Sure, some of them participated in sports and there was a little bit of homework now and then, but remember that parents begged for their children to come inside. Today, it's the opposite. Parents beg their children to take a walk outside, go for a run, or play an outdoor game. 
Rather than parents dragging their kids inside for dinner, parents are dragging their kids outside to get them off of their electronics. It is almost as if our world has flipped upside down since the moment that kids began to get addicted to screens. Screens have really affected the way that we do everything, especially our work. According to an article titled, The Overscheduled Child Is Being Busy Really So Bad? There are alarming statistics showing that the average child spends more time on their screen than in school. This article also shows that many parents constantly wage war against screens, and too often, the screen wins. Our screens are a constant source of distraction, considering we always carry our phones around, and we are required to do a lot of our work in front of screens. We are also always getting notifications on our computers and phones that are sidetracking us. Teenagers could be doing work for school, and they get distracted by social media or an email about a sale. Soon enough, they are sucked into online shopping or binge-watching their favorite Netflix show. Josh Gollin, executive director of a campaign for a commercial for childhood, stated, For some children, having scheduled activities when screens are hard to resist can be hugely beneficial. But the ultimate goal should be to have a mix of activities and unscheduled downtime. It is important to let kids be a little bored and see what comes out of that boredom. An article titled, The Research-Tested Benefits of Breaks, stresses the importance of small breaks throughout the day for anyone from a kindergartner to a senior citizen. In a groundbreaking study from 2012, it was discovered by Mary Helen Amorito Yang and her colleagues that when your brain is in the state which it associates with taking a break or daydreaming, it is actually highly active with different regions and neuron paths lighting up than when you are actively focused. Yuki Terada, the author of this article, had a clear thesis which states, there are more benefits to downtime than increased attention. It decreases stress, increases productivity, boosts brain function, and provides opportunities for children to learn social skills. As you can see, it is really important for people to have physical and mental breaks. It has also been proven that having an extracurricular in one's life is really beneficial to their health. A few of the benefits of extracurricular activities include physical and psychological safety, the development of goal setting, skill building, higher self-esteem, increased contribution to the community, creation of social opportunities, a sense of purpose, and a sense of potential. One benefit that really surprised me was that extracurricular activities actually improved the development of mathematical and verbal skills in younger children. Another development that is important is the development of relationships between children and adults that are not their parents. It is important for children to have adults that they can trust outside of the family in case they have problems that they are uncomfortable bringing up with their parents. Lastly, and most importantly, people who participate in extracurriculars have decreased rates of drug and alcohol use over time. Alvin Rosenfeld, a child and adult psychiatrist, and the author of An Overscheduled Child puts it perfectly by saying, enrichment activities are perfect. They add a lot to kids' lives. The problem is we have lost the ability to balance them with downtime and boring time. Activities outside of school and the family life are so important, but what is most important is the balance of them. Throughout all of my research, I have concluded a few things. Extracurriculars are necessary in a child or teenager's life because there are so many benefits that will benefit you for the rest of your life. Secondly, there is no such thing as an overscheduled child. The organization and consistency in a child's life will benefit them, while downtime often leads to unnecessary screen time and more of an opportunity to engage in drugs or alcohol. If you consider yourself an overscheduled child, consider yourself lucky, as others don't have the financial support or general access to these activities. For underscheduled people, it is much easier to add meaningful activities into your daily life. For overscheduled people, it is much harder to find downtime where your mind is not racing going through lists of all the things that you should really be doing. But it is so important to find balance no matter where you are right now. I have also found that time management and the ability to prioritize are really important in our daily lives. Finally, I have learned that the thing that will benefit your life the most now and forever is balance. If you are like me and you see yourself as overscheduled, it is hard for you to fit everything in. 
I have learned that I need to strive for balance in my life by taking out unnecessary screen time, making room for my family and friends, taking a step back and acknowledging that there is a possibility of too much, making room for necessary downtime, being grateful for the gift of abundance rather than scarcity, and ultimately continuing to dream about the life which I am creating for myself now. I started my research as more of an academic exercise, but at some point I realized it was becoming more personal. I began to see that even though I liked my busy life, something was missing, and that thing was balance. Balance in your life will evolve and change as the things around you change. For me, striving to find balance in my life has definitely benefited me in the seven ways that I brought up in the beginning of this talk. I have seen a lot of improvement in my mood, reduction in my stress, improvement in my health and well-being, I've become more efficient and productive, I've enjoyed myself, I've had a little bit more time for myself, and I've definitely had a better social life. I once considered myself overscheduled, and I knew that overachieving was in my DNA. Thanks, Dad. But putting a plan in action to balance my activities has veered me away from dark roads such as depression, drugs, alcohol, and self-harm. Would you consider yourself a busy person? Do you think you have too much going on, not enough going on, or just enough? Where do you fit into all of this? How can you create balance in your life? I really hope that the information that I gave you today can help you find a healthy balance in your life. Please consider looking at the articles which I have linked in the chat on the side to find more ways to benefit your life. Thank you so much for listening. Stay safe and stay healthy.